Hi, Captain Dylan Hubbard here from Hubbard's Marina, talking to you a little bit about braided line. A lot of people ask, can I use braided line on your trips? Why can't I use braided line on your trips? Do you allow braided line on your trips? The answer is no and yes, kind of. So it's very confusing. So we wanted to make a video today to tell you a little bit more about why braided line is good in some cases and why braided line is bad in some cases and how you can use it successfully on one of the Hubbard's Marina party boat trips or a private charter trip. Braided line works very well for deep water, cutting through the water, works really well for uh, jigging when you're trying to vertical jig. It works well for trolling if you've got a lot of line out there and you want it to cut through the water easily. It works well for snapper fishing to give you that sensitivity to feel the bite. It works really well for hog fishing to, again, give you that sensitivity. So if you're looking for more sensitivity, less stretch, and a little bit easier feel of the bite, braided line definitely works well. However, it's never good to use straight braided line. What I mean by that is braided line all the way through your spool and all the way down to your swivel. The reason why is braid is very visible under the water. The fish can see it. Also, braided line has no stretch. So if you hook a big fish and he's down there shaking his head the whole way to the boat, he's able to tear a big hole on the side of his face and easily spit your hook. So if you use braided line without a monofilament or a fluorocarbon top shot, you're gonna lose a lot of fish. Also, braided line cuts through the water much differently than monofilament line. So if everybody around you is using mono and you're using braid, you have to be very good to make sure that you're not gonna get tangled up with your neighbor. If you do get tangled up with your neighbor, it's very hard to get that monofilament untangled with that braid. The braid just wraps around it and makes a very tight knot. And the only thing to do is pull out a knife or scissors and cut the braid. And as most of you know, braid is very expensive. So if you're cutting braid a lot, it gets pricey quick. So basically, you wanna make sure that you're not tangling with your neighbor. So more experienced anglers can get away with using braid without a problem. Also, braided line uh, will cut through other lines. So if you've got a fish on, someone else has a fish on, and you get crossed up, your braided line will cut their fish off. So that's another issue with braided line. Personally, if I'm fighting bigger fish, amberjack, big grouper, whatever it might be, I typically use mostly monofilament with a braid backing just to be sure if I get a big fish and he starts running, I've got extra line capacity in my reel. Now, when I'm snapper fishing, I'll be using mostly braid, but I'll add a monofilament top shot. And that's how you would successfully fish on a party boat here at Hubbard's Marina with braided line. You have to use a top shot. And a top shot is simply adding a little bit of monofilament or a little bit of fluorocarbon on top of your braided line. Typically, you would be using braided line for snapper fishing on our longer range trips like our 12-hour night snapper trip, our 39-hour trip, or a 44-hour full moon trip. You use that braided line, so that way most of your line in your spool is braid, and then you have a top shot. Typically, your top shot, if you're not as experienced, you want a longer top shot. About two-thirds of your line in the water should be monofilament or fluorocarbon. That's the top shot. If you're a little bit more experienced, you can get away with a shorter top shot. But remember, if you tie a short top shot and you get hung in the bottom once or it gets a little chafed up and you gotta cut it, now it's too short, you gotta tie it again. So I always start the trip with a longer top shot and then throughout the trip, I'm constantly having to cut it and trim it when I get hung in the bottom, chafed in the bottom, or happen to get cut off. Then all of a sudden your top shot gets longer and longer, or uh, shorter and shorter and shorter. So for mangrove snapper fishing, braid works well. For vertical jigging, braid works well. For vertical jigging, you're gonna use a much smaller top shot, typically only about 10, maybe 15 feet of top shot. Whereas for mangrove snapper fishing, I might use 30 or 40 or 50 feet of top shot, depending on the depth of the water. For hog fishing inshore, near shore, 20, 30, 40, up to 60 to 70 feet of water, I'll use about 20 feet, maybe even 25 feet of fluorocarbon top shot 
That way that line totally disappears in the water and that hogfish won't have a chance to see that line and get spooked away from your bait. So braided line works well, but you have to use a monofilament or fluorocarbon top shot. That way that acts as a shock absorber. So when you're using straight braid, there's no stretch. So that fish is able to tear that hole in the side of his mouth and spit your hook. Whereas when you add the top shot, you've got a shock absorber. So as that fish shake his, shakes his head, not only is your rod flexing, but also your line will flex and give him some play so he's not able to tear that hole in the side of his mouth and spit your hook as easily. Also, braided line cuts through the water very differently. When you add that top shot, that means the line near the bottom is gonna be further away or more in line with the people around you. You're gonna be less likely to get tangled up. And when you do start feeling that line touch someone else's, which over time you should be able to feel someone else's line. Very easy, but it takes some practice getting used to. And if you feel someone else's line, you gotta reel up really, really quick. That way, if they do get tangled with you, it's mono to mono instead of mono to braid. So there's just some tips and tricks and techniques to get used to to make braided line fishing okay on the party boats. But you always want to make sure you listen to the crew, listen to the people around you, and if it's causing a problem, we will ask you to stop fishing with the braided line. So it's always a good idea to have another reel with monofilament, or we can always give you a monofilament rod and reel from the boat or we can just add more monofilament on top of your braid so that way you're not using a top shot anymore. You're just using the braid backing with the monofilament uh, filler on top of your spool. You always wanna make sure that you have a little bit of monofilament on the bottom of your spool as well because that braid tends to slip on the spool. So when I'm filling a spool with braid for snapper fishing, like my two-speed Daiwa Saltiga, I'll put a little bit of monofilament in the bottom just to give it some thickness and give something for that braid to seat on. And then I'll tie a line to line knot to my braid and I'll fill the spool almost all the way up with braided line. And then I'll put my top shot on. But if you have any questions, you can always email us, call us, or let us know at the dock before you leave. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. We hope to see you soon at Hubbard's Marina for some great fishing fun.